right, so for this module for visual data tools, I'm going to be going over a very little known feature of the bar charts. And that is the ability to create comparison charts. And I've got a couple examples up here. And you'll see that they're quite common in the world of data visualization. <clears throat> but the VDTs up until about a few years ago, bar charts, we're not able to do this. And there's a problem because you have to sync up all the data across three different charts or multiple different charts. But we figured out a solution. So as you see, I've got a sample here. And I'm using uh, I've got three bar charts, bar chart A, see that, bar chart B, and bar chart C. And they're created a little clusters right here, the first group right here, the second group right there, and third group right here. And if I am also using the data storage plugin, pardon me, the data storage plugin to affect all of the values. So if I go and add the value to 250, you'll see how all of these charts were affected by that change. <clears throat> I'm now able to control three different sets of bar charts. And I'm doing that from this value in here. I've, I've activated the compare. So when I activate the data fit, <clears throat> I'm given a value here that I can start linking these bar charts together. So if I look at bar chart A, Bar chart A is linked to bar chart B, bar chart B is linked to bar chart C, and bar chart C is linked to bar chart A. It's a daisy chain, daisy chain, that's how it works. I call this the daisy chain solution. <clears throat> With bar chart A, I've got my data start and my data stop for the data fit. If I change these values here, you'll see that the same values have been translated to all of the other two bar charts. So when you link them up, we're in a sense creating a larger set of bar charts. So now I'm gonna show you how to make this. I'm gonna close this scene and I'm gonna open up one of the previous scenes I was working with. Let's go back to the original scene right here. And I think with this difference here is I'm gonna get rid of the bar, the labels, and stick with this first. Okay, <clears throat> so I need to graphically create my values. I'm going to take off the animations. And I'm already using data key, so I'm just going to call this bar chart 01. And there'll be three of these, so I'm going to call this bar chart 2. These are three sets, shall we say, bar chart 3. Okay? think that we can add some more values here. Okay. And once again, it's going to drop this value into there. Okay. <clears throat> so I, I need to spread the bar chart and do the graphic design part. So I'm going to give myself some space. So if I just take the width here and spread this out here, bar thickness, 200, maximum width is 550. And I think that this could be a little thinner. So three, five, zero. Now, as you see, I'm not doing anything really scientific. I'm just sort of playing with the values up here and uh, getting a feel for what I want to happen. All right. <clears throat> I've also still got this on center alignments. And I'm also going to make these values a little smaller. Okay, I'll come back. I think I'll take off the dollar signs for now. And as you see, I've called this, I'm just a sticker for naming my containers. So now I'd like to add another container. And this one here is going to go to be bar chart two. And then this is bar chart three. <clears throat> bar chart two is in the center. So this one here, I'm going to move to the left by about negative 20. 
it's 20. You're not seeing anything, I know, because we've got to, put, we've got to add some values here. And it's going to put that there like that. <clears throat> I'm going to change these values so we can see what's going on. See, this is the neat thing about visual data tools. What's very important is that I'm not even getting into the whole data part. I'm still spending a lot of time designing and playing around with the look and feel. So that's the key thing about getting these values in there so that you can understand what the overall end graphic is going to look like. So give me a sec. Just going to throw some interesting numbers here. <clears throat> and of course, I've also got to change this value to the bar chart 02 because that's a key data. Same thing with this. Three. And then I'll go back up here to the this and just enter, enter, enter. Okay, so we have the values happening. Um, 12, 27. Oh, I've got to change these values here as well. I forgot to do this. 2, 3. Once again, hit return, push those values through. Okay, so this value here, I think, needs some spacing. So I'm going to go to negative 35, which means this one here is going to go to 35 right there, like that. So there we have the basics of your group, group comparison bar charts. For colors, I'm going to make the first blue here a little bit brighter and make the negative part a little darker if I go down there. And for here, I'm going to make this one darker. And this one actually a little bit lighter and pinker. So we need a little negative value. Let's put this, uh, let's say this is negative. And that's negative. And that's negative as well. <clears throat> okay, so I have now made this comparison bar chart. But they're not yet working with each other. They have to sync up with each other. So to show you what I mean by that, if I go here to... 200 and uh, let's go that to 100 and then I make this one down here at 275 you'll see that they're not really working with each other they've got to sort of sync up with each other so once again as, as I said we turn on the comparison we turn on the data fit sorry let's go back here make this data fit Data fit, data fit, auto scale, auto scale, auto scale. I should turn that off. Let's go without that for now. And I'm going to play with some numbers here. Negative, those drop right there. Actually, I do need that, so I'm going to go like this. It's data start, I'm going to give myself 15. Sorry, this is where we've got to link us up, we can link each other up. So bar chart 1 is linked to bar chart 2. Bar chart 2 is linked to... Turn on the compare. Where's my compare? Right there. Bar chart 3. And bar chart 3 is linked to bar chart 1. So now they're all sort of working with each other. And I can now add some values and maybe increase those out. So now we have a comparison bar chart. So anytime I go in here and add values and make some changes, say make that 90, everything is being affected across the board. So in conclusion, you can see that with the Visual Data Tool bar chart, you can very easily create comparison bar charts. You can use the same data storage. Um, but a lot of it also is using, it's using the daisy chain effect of hitting on the compare, data fit, and then compare down here, linking them up across the board. 
And as you saw for what I was doing, I was also sort of playing around with the GUI a little bit, trying to get my head around that. The GUI is not terribly easy, but you know, if you just keep playing and, and playing with the values, you can get what you want and get the results. And now this graphic is ready to go in and take in some data and make a template with it. Thank you very much for the visual data tool selections. The next version of this, we're going to look at financial charts. So stick around. Mm -hmm.